Section 12 of Pensée. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Derek McLaughlin, London, Ontario, Canada. Latin language reading by Lenny, Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. Pensée by Blaise Pascal. Translated by W. F. Trotter. Section 12. Proofs of Jesus Christ. 737. Therefore I reject all other religions. In that way I find an answer to all objections. It is right that a God so pure should only reveal himself to those whose hearts are purified. Hence this religion is lovable to me, and I find it now sufficiently justified by so divine a morality. But I find more in it. I find it convincing that, since the memory of man has lasted, it was constantly announced to men that they were universally corrupt, but that a Redeemer should come, that it was not one man who said it, but innumerable men, and a whole nation expressly made for the purpose, and prophesying for four thousand years. This is a nation which is more ancient than every other nation. Their books, scattered abroad, are four thousand years old. The more I examine them, the more truths I find in them. An entire nation foretell him before his advent, and an entire nation worship him after his advent, what has preceded and what has followed. In short, people without idols and kings, this synagogue which was foretold, and these wretches who frequent it, and who, being our enemies, are admirable witnesses of the truth of these prophecies, wherein their wretchedness and even their blindness are foretold. I find this succession, this religion, wholly divine in its authority, in its duration, in its perpetuity, in its morality, in its conduct, in its doctrine, in its effects. The frightful darkness of the Jews was foretold. Edis falpans in meridie. Footnote, Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 29. And thou shalt grope at noonday, as the blind gropeth in darkness, and thou shalt not prosper in thy ways, and thou shalt be only oppressed and robbed alway and there shall be none to save thee. End of footnote. Dabitur liber scienti literas, etiquet, non possum legere. Footnote. Isaiah chapter 29, verse 12. And the book is delivered to him that is not learned, saying, Read this, I pray thee, and he saith, I am not learned. End of footnote. While the scepter was still in the hands of the first foreign usurper, there is the report of the coming of Jesus Christ. So I hold out my arms to my Redeemer, who, having been foretold for four thousand years, has come to suffer and to die for me on earth, at the time and under all the circumstances foretold. By His grace I await death in peace, in the hope of being eternally united to Him. Yet I live with joy, whether in the prosperity which it pleases Him to bestow upon me, or in the adversity which He sends for my good, and which He has taught me to bear by His example. 738. The prophecies, having given different signs which should all happen at the advent of the Messiah, it was necessary that all these signs should occur at the same time. So it was necessary that the fourth monarchy should have come, when the seventy weeks of Daniel were ended, and that the scepter should have then departed from Judah. And all this happened without any difficulty. Then it was necessary that the Messiah should come, and Jesus Christ then came who was called the Messiah. And all this again was without difficulty. This indeed shows the truth of the prophecies. 739. The prophets foretold, and were not foretold. The saints again were foretold, but did not foretell. Jesus Christ both foretold, and was foretold. 740. Jesus Christ, whom the two testaments regard, the old as its hope, the new as its model, and both as their center. 741. The two oldest books in the world are those of Moses and Job, the one a Jew and the other a Gentile. Both of them look upon Jesus Christ as their common center and object, Moses in relating the promises of God to Abraham, Jacob, etc., and his prophecies, and Job, quis mihi deet ut, etc., Scio enim quadredemptor meus vivit, etc. Footnote. 
Job chapter 19, verses 23 to 25. Oh, that my words were now written! Oh, that they were inscribed in a book! That with an iron pen and lead they were graven in the rock for ever! But as for me, I know that my Redeemer liveth, and at last he will stand up upon the earth. End of footnote. 742. The Gospel only speaks of the virginity of the Virgin up to the time of the birth of Jesus Christ, all with reference to Jesus Christ. 743. Proofs of Jesus Christ. Why was the book of Ruth preserved? Why the story of Tamar? 744. Pray that ye enter not into temptation. It is dangerous to be tempted, and people are tempted because they do not pray. Et tu, conversus, confirma fratres tuos. Footnote. Luke, chapter 22, verse 32. But I made supplication for thee, that thy faith fail not. And do thou, when once thou hast turned again, establish thy brethren. End of footnote. But before... Conversus Jesus respectit Petrum. Footnote. Luke, chapter 22, verse 61. And the Lord turned and looked upon Peter. And Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how that he said unto him, Before the cock crow this day, thou shalt deny me thrice. End of footnote. St. Peter asks permission to strike Malchus, and strikes before hearing the answer. Jesus Christ replies afterwards. The word, Galilee, which the Jewish mob pronounced as if by chance in accusing Jesus Christ before Pilate, afforded Pilate a reason for sending Jesus Christ to Herod, and thereby the mystery was accomplished, that he should be judged by Jews and Gentiles. Chance was apparently the cause of the accomplishment of the mystery. 745. Those who have a difficulty in believing seek a reason in the fact that the Jews do not believe. Were this so clear, say they, why did the Jews not believe? And they almost wished that they had believed, so as not to be kept back by the example of their refusal. But it is their very refusal that is the foundation of our faith. We should be much less disposed to the faith if they were on our side. We should then have a more ample pretext. The wonderful thing is to have made the Jews great lovers of the things foretold, and great enemies of their fulfillment. 746. The Jews were accustomed to great and striking miracles, and so, having had the great miracles of the Red Sea and of the land of Canaan as an epitome of the great deeds of their Messiah, they therefore looked for more striking miracles, of which those of Moses were only the patterns. 747. The carnal Jews and the heathen have their calamities, and Christians also. There is no Redeemer for the heathen, for they do not so much as hope for one. There is no Redeemer for the Jews, they hope for him in vain. There is a Redeemer only for Christians. See Perpetuity. 748. In the time of the Messiah, the people divided themselves. The spiritual embraced the Messiah, and the coarser-minded remained to serve as witnesses of him. 749. If this was clearly foretold to the Jews, how did they not believe it, or why were they not destroyed for resisting a fact so clear? I reply, in the first place it was foretold both that they would not believe a thing so clear, and that they would not be destroyed. And nothing is more to the glory of the Messiah, for it was not enough that there should be prophets, their prophets must be kept above suspicion. Now, etc. 750. If the Jews had all been converted by Jesus Christ, we should have none but questionable witnesses. And if they had been entirely destroyed, we should have no witnesses at all. 751. What do the prophets say of Jesus Christ? That he will be clearly God? No, but that he is a God truly hidden, that he will be slighted, that none will think that it is he, that he will be a stone of stumbling, upon which many will stumble, etc., let people then reproach us no longer for want of clearness, since we make profession of it. But it is said there are obscurities, and without that no one would have stumbled over Jesus Christ, and this is one of the formal pronouncements of the prophets. Excaica. Footnote. Isaiah chapter 6 verse 10. Make the heart of this people fat, and make their ears heavy, and shut their eyes, 
lest they see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and turn again, and be healed. End of footnote. 752. Moses first teaches the Trinity, original sin, the Messiah. David, a great witness, a king, good, merciful, a beautiful soul, a sound mind, powerful. He prophesies, and his wonder comes to pass. This is infinite. He had only to say that he was the Messiah, if he had been vain, for the prophecies are clearer about him than about Jesus Christ. And the same with St. John. 753. Herod was believed to be the Messiah. He had taken away the scepter from Judah, but he was not of Judah. This gave rise to a considerable sect. Curse of the Greeks upon those who count three periods of time. In what way should the Messiah come, seeing that through him the scepter was to be eternally in Judah, and at his coming the scepter was to be taken away from Judah? In order to effect that seeing they should not see, and hearing they should not understand, nothing could be better done. 754. Homo existence, te deum facit. Footnote. Man existing makes thee God. End of footnote. Scriptum est, de estis, et non potest solvi scriptura. Footnote. It is written, you are gods, and the scripture cannot be overthrown. End of footnote. Haec infirmitas non est ad vitam, et est ad mortem. Footnote. This sickness is not unto life, and is unto death. End of footnote. Lazarus dormit, et de inde dixit. Lazarus mortus est. Footnote. John chapter 11, verses 11 and 14. These things spake he, and after this he saith unto them, Our friend Lazarus is fallen asleep, but I go, that I may awake him out of sleep. Then Jesus therefore said unto them plainly, Lazarus is dead. End of footnote. 755. The Apparent Discrepancy of the Gospels. 756. What can we have but reverence for a man who foretells plainly things which come to pass, and who declares his intention both to blind and to enlighten, and who intersperses obscurities among the clear things which come to pass? 757. The time of the first advent was foretold, the time of the second is not so, because the first was to be obscure, and the second is to be brilliant, and so manifest that even his enemies will recognize it. But, as he was first to come only in obscurity, and to be known only of those who searched the scriptures, note, in the text, the thought is incomplete. End of note. 758. God, in order to cause the Messiah to be known by the good, and not to be known by the wicked, made him to be foretold in this manner. If the manner of the Messiah had been clearly foretold, there would have been no obscurity, even for the wicked. If the time had been obscurely foretold, there would have been obscurity even for the good. For their goodness of heart would not have made them understand, for instance, that the closed mem signifies six hundred years. But the time has been clearly foretold, and the manner in types. By this means the wicked, taking the promised blessings for material blessings, have fallen into error, in spite of the clear prediction of the time, and the good have not fallen into error. For the understanding of the promised blessings depends on the heart, which calls good that which it loves. But the understanding of the promised time does not depend on the heart. And thus the clear prediction of the time, and the obscure prediction of the blessings, deceive the wicked alone. 759. Either the Jews or the Christians must be wicked. 760. The Jews reject him, but not all. The saints receive him, and not the carnal-minded. And so far is this from being against his glory, that it is the last touch which crowns it. For their argument, the only one found in all their writings, in the Talmud and in the rabbinical writings, amounts only to this, that Jesus Christ has not subdued the nations with sword in hand. Gladium tuum potentissime. Footnote. Psalm 45, verse 3. Gird thy sword upon thy thigh, O mighty one, thy glory and thy majesty. End of footnote. Is this all they have to say? Jesus Christ has been slain, say they. He has failed. 
He has not subdued the heathen with his might. He has not bestowed upon us their spoil. He does not give riches. Is this all they have to say? It is in this respect that he is lovable to me. I would not desire him whom they fancy. It is evident that it is only his life which has prevented them from accepting him, and through this rejection they are irreproachable witnesses, and, what is more, they thereby accomplish the prophecies. By means of the fact that this people have not accepted him, this miracle here has happened. The prophecies were the only lasting miracles which could be wrought, but they were liable to be denied. 761. The Jews, in slaying him in order not to receive him as the Messiah, have given him the final proof of being the Messiah. And in continuing not to recognize him, they made themselves irreproachable witnesses. Both in slaying him and in continuing to deny him, they have fulfilled the prophecies. Isaiah chapter 60, Psalm 71. 762. What could the Jews, his enemies, do? If they receive him, they give proof of him by their reception, for then the guardians of the expectation of the Messiah receive him. If they reject him, they give proof of him by their rejection. 763. The Jews, in testing if he were God, have shown that he was man. 764. The Church has had as much difficulty in showing that Jesus Christ was man against those who denied it, as in showing that he was God, and the probabilities were equally great. 765. Source of Contradictions A God humiliated even to the death on the cross, a Messiah triumphing over death by his own death. Two natures in Jesus Christ, two advents, two states of man's nature. 766. Types Savior, Father, Sacrificer, Offering, Food, King, Wise, Lawgiver, Afflicted, Poor, Having to create a people whom he must lead and nourish and bring into his land. Jesus Christ, Offices He alone had to create a great people, elect, holy, and chosen, to lead, nourish, and bring it into the place of rest and holiness, to make it holy to God, to make it the temple of God, to reconcile it to and save it from the wrath of God, to free it from the slavery of sin which visibly reigns in man, to give laws to this people and engrave these laws on their heart, to offer himself to God for them and sacrifice himself for them, to be a victim without blemish and himself the sacrificer, having to offer himself, his body, and his blood, and yet to offer bread and wine to God. Ingredients mundum. Footnote. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 5. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he saith, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body didst thou prepare for me. End of footnote. Stone upon stone. What preceded and what followed. All the Jews exist still and are wanderers. 767. Of all that is on earth he partakes only of the sorrows, not of the joys. He loves his neighbors, but his love does not confine itself within these bounds, and overflows to his own enemies, and then to those of God. 768. Jesus Christ typified by Joseph the beloved of his father, sent by his father to see his brethren, etc., innocent, sold by his brethren for twenty pieces of silver, and thereby becoming their lord, their saviour, the saviour of strangers, and the saviour of the world, which had not been but for their plot to destroy him, their sale and their rejection of him. In prison, Joseph, innocent between two criminals, Jesus Christ on the cross between two thieves. Joseph foretells freedom to the one and death to the other, from the same omens. Jesus Christ saves the elect and condemns the outcast for the same sins. Joseph foretells only. Jesus Christ acts. Joseph asks him who will be saved to remember him when he comes into his glory, and he whom Jesus Christ saves asks that he will remember him when he comes into his kingdom. 769. The conversion of the heathen was only reserved for the grace of the Messiah. The Jews have been so long in opposition to them without success, 
All that Solomon and the prophets said has been useless. Sages, like Plato and Socrates, have been able to persuade them. 770. After many persons had gone before, Jesus Christ at last came to say, Here am I, and this is the time. That which the prophets have said was to come in the fullness of time, I tell you my apostles will do. The Jews shall be cast out, Jerusalem shall be soon destroyed, and the heathen shall enter into the knowledge of God. My apostles shall do this, after you have slain the heir of the vineyard. Then the apostles said to the Jews, You shall be accursed. Celsus laughed at it. And to the heathen you shall enter into the knowledge of God. And this then came to pass. 771. Jesus Christ came to blind those who saw clearly, and to give sight to the blind, to heal the sick and leave the healthy to die to call to repentance, and to justify sinners, and to leave the righteous in their sins, to fill the needy, and leave the rich empty. 772. Holiness. Effundum spiritum meum. Footnote. Joel, chapter 2, verse 28. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams, your young men shall see visions. End of footnote. All nations were in unbelief and lust. The whole world now became fervent with love. Princes abandoned their pomp. Maidens suffered martyrdom. Whence came this influence? The Messiah was come. These were the effect and signs of his coming. 773. Destruction of the Jews and Heathen by Jesus Christ. Omnes gentes venient et adorabunt eum. Footnote. Psalm 22, verse 2. O my God, I cry in the daytime, but thou answerest not, and in the night season, and am not silent. End of footnote. Parum est ut. Etc. Footnote. Isaiah, chapter 49, verse 6. He says, It is too small a thing for you to be my servant, to restore the tribes of Jacob, and to bring back those of Israel I have kept. I will also make you a light for the Gentiles, that you may bring my salvation to the ends of the earth. End of footnote. Postula Ami. Footnote. Psalm 2, verse 8. Ask of me, and I will make the nations your inheritance, the ends of the earth your possession. End of footnote. Adorabunt eum omnis regis. Footnote. Psalm 72, verse 11. All kings will bow down to him, and all nations will serve him. End of footnote. Testes iniqui. Footnote. Psalm 35, verse 11. Ruthless witnesses come forward. They question me on things I know nothing about. End of footnote. David maxillam percutienti. Footnote. Lamentations, chapter 3, verse 30. Let him offer his cheek to one who would strike him, and let him be filled with disgrace. End of footnote. De derun fell in escam. Footnote. Psalm 69, verse 21. They put gall in my food and gave me vinegar for my thirst. End of footnote. 774. Jesus Christ for all, Moses for a nation. The Jews blessed in Abraham, I will bless those that bless thee. But all nations blessed in his seed. Parmest ut. Etc. Lumen ad revelationem gentium. Footnote. Luke, chapter 2, verse 32. A light for revelation to the Gentiles, and for glory to your people, Israel. End of footnote. Non fecit taliter omni nationi. Footnote. Psalm 147, verse 20. He has done this for no other nation. They do not know his laws. Praise the Lord. End of footnote. Said David in speaking of the law. But, in speaking of Jesus Christ, we must say, Fecit taliter omni nationi, parum est ut, etc., Isaiah. So it belongs to Jesus Christ to be universal. Even the church offers sacrifice only for the faithful. Jesus Christ offered that of the cross for all. 775. There is heresy in always explaining omnes by all and heresy in not explaining it sometimes by all. Bibite ex hoc omnis. Footnote. Matthew chapter 26 verse 27. 
Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and offered it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. End of footnote. The Huguenots are heretics in explaining it by all. In quo omnes pecaverunt. Footnote. Romans chapter 5, verse 12. Therefore, just as sin entered the world through one man, and death through sin, in this way death came to all men, because all sinned. End of footnote. The Huguenots are heretics in accepting the children of true believers. We must then follow the fathers and tradition in order to know when to do so, since there is heresy to be feared on both sides. 776. Netimias pusilus grex. Footnote. Luke chapter 12, verse 32. Do not be afraid, little flock, for your father has been pleased to give you the kingdom. End of footnote. Timore et tremore. Quid ergo. Netimias modo timias. Fear not, provided you fear. But if you fear not, then fear. Qui me recipit, non me recipit, sed eum qui me misit. Footnote, Matthew chapter 10, verse 40. He who receives you receives me, and he who receives me receives the one who sent me. End of footnote. Nemoscit, neque filius. Footnote, Matthew chapter 11, verse 27. All things have been committed to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. End of footnote. Nubes lucida obumbrawit. Footnote. Matthew chapter 17 verse 5. While he was still speaking, a bright cloud enveloped them, and a voice from the cloud said, This is my son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. End of footnote. St. John was to turn hearts of the fathers to the children, and Jesus Christ to plant division. There is no contradiction. 777. The effects in comuni ad in particulari. Footnote. In general, in particular. End of footnote. The semi-Pelagians err in saying of in comuni what is true only in particulari, and the Calvinists in saying in particulari what is true in comuni. Such is my opinion. 778. Omnis Judaea Regio et Jerusalemitai universi, et baptizabantur. Footnote. Mark chapter 1, verse 5. The whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to him. Confessing their sins, they were baptized by him in the Jordan River. End of footnote. Because of all the conditions of men who came there. From these stones there can come children unto Abraham. 779. If men knew themselves, God would heal and pardon them. Ne convertantur et sanem eos, et nimitantur eis peccata. Footnote, Mark, chapter 4, verse 12. So that they may be ever seeing but never perceiving, and ever hearing but never understanding. Otherwise they might turn and be forgiven. End of footnote. 780. Jesus Christ never condemned without hearing. To Judas... Amice ad quid venisti. Footnote, Matthew chapter 26, verse 50. Jesus replied, Friend, do what you came for. End of footnote. To him that had not on the wedding garment, the same. 781. The types of the completeness of the redemption, as that the Son gives light to all, indicate only completeness but the types of exclusions, as of the Jews elected to the exclusion of the Gentiles, indicate exclusion. Jesus Christ, the Redeemer of all. Yes, for he has offered like a man who has ransomed all those who were willing to come to him. If any die on the way, it is their misfortune, but, so far as he was concerned, he offered them redemption. That holds good in this example, where he who ransoms and he who prevents death are two persons, but not of Jesus Christ, who does both these things. No, for Jesus Christ, in the quality of Redeemer, is not perhaps Master of all, and thus, in so far as it is in Him, He is the Redeemer of all. When it is said that Jesus Christ did not die for all, you take undue advantage of a fault in men who at once apply this exception to themselves, and this is to favor despair, 
instead of turning them from it to favor hope. For men thus accustom themselves to inward virtues by outward customs. 782. The Victory Over Death What is a man advantaged if he gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Whosoever will save his soul shall lose it. I am not come to destroy the law, but to fulfill. Lambs took not away the sins of the world, but I am the Lamb which taketh away the sins. Moses gave you not the bread from heaven. Moses hath not led you out of captivity, and made you truly free. 783. Then Jesus Christ comes to tell men that they have no other enemies but themselves, that it is their passions which keep them apart from God, that he comes to destroy these and to give them his grace, so as to make of them all one holy church, that he comes to bring back into this church the heathen and Jews, that he comes to destroy the idols of the former and the superstition of the latter. To this all men are opposed, not only from the natural opposition of lust, but above all the kings of the earth, as had been foretold, joined together to destroy this religion at its birth. Quare fermerum gentes, reges terrae, adversus Christum. Footnote, Psalm 2, verses 1 and 2. Why do the nations conspire and the peoples plot in vain? The kings of the earth take their stand, and the rulers gather together against the Lord and against his anointed one, taken as a prophecy of Christ. End of footnote. All that is great on earth is united together, the learned, the wise, the kings. The first write, the second condemn, the last kill. And notwithstanding all these oppositions, these men, simple and weak, resist all these powers, subdue even these kings, these learned men and these sages, and remove idolatry from all the earth. And all this is done by the power which had foretold it. 784. Jesus Christ would not have the testimony of devils, nor of those who were not called, but of God and John the Baptist. 785. I consider Jesus Christ in all persons and in ourselves, Jesus Christ as a father in his father, Jesus Christ as a brother in his brethren, Jesus Christ as poor in the poor, Jesus Christ as rich in the rich, Jesus Christ as doctor and priest in priests, Jesus Christ as sovereign in princes, etc. For by his glory he is all that is great, being God, and by his mortal life he is all that is poor and abject. Therefore he has taken this unhappy condition, so that he could be in all persons, and the model of all conditions. 786. Jesus Christ is an obscurity, according to what the world calls obscurity, such that historians, writing only of important matters of states, have hardly noticed him. 787. On the fact that neither Josephus, nor Tacitus, nor other historians have spoken of Jesus Christ. So far is this from telling against Christianity, that on the contrary it tells for it. For it is certain that Jesus Christ has existed, that his religion has made a great talk, and that these persons were not ignorant of it. Thus it is plain that they purposely concealed it, or that, if they did speak of it, their account has been suppressed or changed. 788. I have reserved me seven thousand. I love the worshippers unknown to the world and to the very prophets. 789. As Jesus Christ remained unknown among men, so his truth remains among common opinions without external difference. Thus the Eucharist among ordinary bread. 790. Jesus would not be slain without the forms of justice, for it is far more ignominious to die by justice than by an unjust sedition. 791. The false justice of Pilate only serves to make Jesus Christ suffer, for he causes him to be scourged by his false justice, and afterwards puts him to death. It would have been better to have put him to death at once. Thus it is with the falsely just. They do good and evil works to please the world, and to show that they are not altogether of Jesus Christ, for they are ashamed of him. And at last, under great temptations and on great occasions, they kill him. 792. What man ever had more renown? 
The whole Jewish people foretell him before his coming. The Gentile people worship him after his coming. The two peoples, Gentile and Jewish, regard him as their center. And yet what man enjoys this renown less? Of thirty-three years he lives thirty without appearing. For three years he passes as an impostor. The priests and the chief people reject him. His friends and his nearest relatives despise him. Finally he dies, betrayed by one of his own disciples, denied by another, and abandoned by all. What part, then, has he in this renown? Never had man so much renown, never had man more ignominy. All that renown has served only for us to render us capable of recognizing him, and he had none of it for himself. 793. The infinite distance between body and mind is a symbol of the infinitely more infinite distance between mind and charity, for charity is supernatural. All the glory of greatness has no luster for people who are in search of understanding. The greatness of clever men is invisible to kings, to the rich, to chiefs, and to all the worldly great. The greatness of wisdom, which is nothing if not of God, is invisible to the carnal-minded and to the clever. These are three orders differing in kind. Great geniuses have their power, their glory, their greatness, their victory, their luster, and have no need of worldly greatness, with which they are not in keeping. They are seen, not by the eye, but by the mind. This is sufficient. The saints have their power, their glory, their victory, their luster, and need no worldly or intellectual greatness, with which they have no affinity, for these neither add anything to them, nor take away anything from them. They are seen of God and the angels, and not of the body, nor of the curious mind. God is enough for them. Archimedes, apart from his rank, would have the same veneration. He fought no battles for the eyes to feast upon, but he has given his discoveries to all men. Oh, how brilliant he was to the mind! Jesus Christ, without riches and without any external exhibition of knowledge, is in his own order of holiness. He did not invent, he did not reign, but he was humble, patient, holy, holy to God, terrible to devils, without any sin. Oh, in what great pomp, and in what wonderful splendor, he has come to the eyes of the heart which perceive wisdom. It would have been useless for Archimedes to have acted the prince in his books on geometry, although he was a prince. It would have been useless for our Lord Jesus Christ to come like a king in order to shine forth in his kingdom of holiness, but he came there appropriately in the glory of his own order. It is most absurd to take offense at the lowliness of Jesus Christ, as if his lowliness were in the same order as the greatness which he came to manifest. If we consider this greatness in his life, in his passion, in his obscurity, in his death, in the choice of his disciples, in their desertion, in his secret resurrection, and the rest, we shall see it to be so immense that we shall have no reason for being offended at a lowliness which is not of that order. But there are some who can only admire worldly greatness, as though there were no intellectual greatness, and others who only admire intellectual greatness, as though there were not infinitely higher things in wisdom. All bodies, the firmament, the stars, the earth and its kingdoms, are not equal to the lowest mind, for mind knows all these and itself, and these bodies nothing. All bodies together, and all minds together, and all their products, are not equal to the least feeling of charity. This is of an order infinitely more exalted. From all bodies together we cannot obtain one little thought. This is impossible, and of another order. From all bodies and minds we cannot produce a feeling of true charity. This is impossible, and of another and supernatural order. 794. Why did Jesus Christ not come in a visible manner, instead of obtaining testimony of himself from preceding prophecies? Why did he cause himself to be foretold in types? 795. If Jesus Christ had only come to sanctify, all scripture and all things would tend to that end, and it would be quite easy to convince unbelievers. If Jesus Christ had only come to blind, all his conduct would be confused, and we would have no means of convincing unbelievers. But, as he came, in sanctificationem et in scandalum, 
Footnote, Isaiah chapter 8, verse 14, And he will be a sanctuary, but for both houses of Israel he will be a stone that causes men to stumble, and a rock that makes them fall. And for the people of Jerusalem he will be a trap and a snare. End of footnote. As Isaiah says, we cannot convince unbelievers, and they cannot convince us. But by this very fact we convince them, since we say that in his whole conduct there is no convincing proof on one side or the other. 796. Jesus Christ does not say that he is not of Nazareth, in order to leave the wicked in their blindness, nor that he is not Joseph's son. 797. Proofs of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ said great things so simply that it seems as though he had not thought them great, and yet so clearly that we easily see what he thought of them. This clearness, joined to this simplicity, is wonderful. 798. The style of the gospel is admirable in so many ways, and among the rest in hurling no invectives against the persecutors and enemies of Jesus Christ. For there is no such invective in any of the historians against Judas, Pilate, or any of the Jews. If this moderation of the writers of the Gospels had been assumed, as well as many other traits of so beautiful a character, and they had only assumed it to attract notice, even if they had not dared to draw attention to it themselves, they would not have failed to secure friends, for who would have made such remarks to their advantage? But as they acted thus without pretense, and from wholly disinterested motives, they did not point it out to any one, and I believe that many such facts have not been noticed till now, which is evidence of the natural disinterestedness with which the thing has been done. 799. An artisan who speaks of wealth, a lawyer who speaks of war, of royalty, etc. But the rich man rightly speaks of wealth, a king speaks indifferently of a great gift he has just made, and God rightly speaks of God. 800. Who has taught the evangelists the quality of a perfectly heroic soul, that they paint it so perfectly in Jesus Christ? Why do they make him weak in his agony? Do they not know how to paint a resolute death? Yes, for the same St. Luke paints the death of St. Stephen as braver than that of Jesus Christ. They make him therefore capable of fear before the necessity of dying has come, and then altogether brave. But when they make him so troubled, it is when he afflicts himself, and when men afflict him, he is altogether strong. 801. Proof of Jesus Christ. The supposition that the apostles were impostors is very absurd. Let us think it out. Let us imagine those twelve men, assembled after the death of Jesus Christ, plotting to say that he was risen. By this they attack all the powers. The heart of man is strangely inclined to fickleness, to change, to promises, to gain. However little any of them might have been led astray by all these attractions, nay more, by the fear of prisons, tortures, and death, they were lost. Let us follow up this thought. 802. The apostles were either deceived or deceivers. Either supposition has difficulties, for it is not possible to mistake a man raised from the dead. While Jesus Christ was with them, he could sustain them. But, after that, if he did not appear to them, who inspired them to act? End of section 12section 13 of Pensée. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Derek McLaughlin, London, Ontario, Canada. Latin language reading by Lenny, Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. Pensée by Blaise Pascal. Translated by W. F. Trotter. Section 13. The Miracles. 803. The Beginning. Miracles enable us to judge of doctrine, and doctrine enables us to judge of miracles. There are false miracles and true. There must be a distinction in order to know them, otherwise they would be useless. Now they are not useless, on the contrary they are fundamental. 
Now the rule which is given to us must be such, that it does not destroy the proof which the true miracles give of the truth, which is the chief end of the miracles. Moses has given two rules, that the prediction does not come to pass, Deuteronomy chapter 18, and that they do not lead to idolatry, Deuteronomy chapter 13, and Jesus Christ, one. If doctrine regulates miracles, miracles are useless for doctrine. If miracles regulate, note in the text, the thought is incomplete, end of note. Objection to the rule, the distinction of the times. One rule during the time of Moses, another at present. 804. Miracle. It is an effect which exceeds the natural power of the means which are employed for it, and what is not a miracle is an effect which does not exceed the natural power of the means which are employed for it. Thus, those who heal by invocation of the devil do not work a miracle, for that does not exceed the natural power of the devil. But, note, in the text the thought is incomplete. End of note. 805. The two fundamentals, one inward, the other outward, grace and miracles, both supernatural. 806. Miracles and truth are necessary, because it is necessary to convince the entire man in body and soul. 807. In all times, either men have spoken of the true God, or the true God has spoken to men. 808. Jesus Christ has verified that he was the Messiah, never in verifying his doctrine by scripture and the prophecies, but always by his miracles. He proves by a miracle that he remits sins. Rejoice not in your miracles, said Jesus Christ, but because your names are written in heaven. If they believe not Moses, neither will they believe one risen from the dead. Nicodemus recognizes by his miracles that his teaching is of God. Scimus quia venisti adeo, magister, nemo enim potest haec signa facere, quae tu facis, nisi deos fuerit cum eo. Footnote, John chapter 3, verse 2. The same came unto him by night, and said to him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs that thou doest, except God be with him. End of footnote. He does not judge of the miracles by the teaching, but of the teaching by the miracles. The Jews had a doctrine of God as we have one of Jesus Christ, and confirmed by miracles. They were forbidden to believe every worker of miracles, and they were further commanded to have recourse to the chief priests, and to rely on them. And thus, in regard to their prophets, they had all those reasons which we have for refusing to believe the workers of miracles. And yet they were very sinful in rejecting the prophets, and Jesus Christ, because of their miracles, and they would not have been culpable if they had not seen the miracles. Nisi fecissem, peccatum non haberent. Footnote, John, chapter 15, verse 24. If I had not done among them the works which none other did, they had not had sin. But now have they both seen and hated both me and my father. End of footnote. Therefore all belief rests upon miracles. Prophecy is not called miracle, as St. John speaks of the first miracle in Cana, and then of what Jesus Christ says to the woman of Samaria when he reveals to her all her hidden life. Then he heals the centurion's son, and St. John calls this the second miracle. 809. The Combinations of Miracles 810. The second miracle can suppose the first, but the first cannot suppose the second. 811. Had it not been for the miracles, there would have been no sin in not believing in Jesus Christ. 812. I should not be a Christian, but for the miracles, said St. Augustine. 813. Miracles. How I hate those who make men doubt of miracles! Montaigne speaks of them as he should in two places. In one we see how careful he is, and yet in the other he believes, and makes sport of unbelievers. However it may be, the church is without proofs if they are right. 814. 
Montaigne against miracles, Montaigne for miracles. 815. It is not possible to have a reasonable belief against miracles. 816. Unbelievers the most credulous. They believe the miracles of Vespasian in order not to believe those of Moses. 817. Title. How it happens that men believe so many liars who say that they have seen miracles, and do not believe any of those who say that they have secrets to make men immortal or restore youth to them. Having considered how it happens that so great credence is given to so many impostors, who say they have remedies, often to the length of men putting their lives into their hands, it has appeared to me that the true cause is that there are true remedies. For it would not be possible that there should be so many false remedies, and that so much faith should be placed in them, if there were none true. If there had never been any remedy for any ill, and all ills had been incurable, it is impossible that men should have imagined that they could give remedies, and still more impossible that so many others should have believed those who boasted of having remedies. In the same way as did a man boast of preventing death, no one would believe him, because there is no example of this. But as there were a number of remedies found to be true by the very knowledge of the greatest men, the belief of men is thereby induced. And, this being known to be possible, it has been therefore concluded that it was. For people commonly reason thus, A thing is possible, therefore it is, because the thing cannot be denied generally, since there are particular effects which are true, the people, who cannot distinguish which among these particular effects are true, believe them all. In the same way, the reason why so many false effects are credited to the moon is that there are some true, as the tide. It is the same with prophecies, miracles, divination by dreams, sorceries, etc. For if there had been nothing true in all this, men would have believed nothing of them. And thus, instead of concluding that there are no true miracles because there are so many false, we must, on the contrary, say that there certainly are true miracles, since there are false, and that there are false miracles only because some are true. We must reason in the same way about religion, for it would not be possible that men should have imagined so many false religions if there had not been a true one. The objection to this is that savages have a religion, but the answer is that they have heard the true spoken of, as appears by the deluge, circumcision, the cross of St. Andrew, etc. 818. Having considered how it comes that there are so many false miracles, false revelations, sorceries, etc., it has seemed to me that the true cause is that there are some true, for it would not be possible that there should be so many false miracles if there were none true, nor so many false revelations if there were none true, nor so many false religions if there were not one true. For if there had never been all this, it is almost impossible that men should have imagined it, and still more impossible that so many others should have believed it. But as there have been very great things true, and as they have been believed by great men, this impression has been the cause that nearly everybody is rendered capable of believing also the false. And thus, instead of concluding that there are no true miracles, since there are so many false, it must be said, on the contrary, that there are true miracles, since there are so many false, and that there are false ones only because there are true, and that in the same way there are false religions because there is one true. Objection to this. Savages have a religion but this is because they have heard the true spoken of, as appears by the cross of St. Andrew, the deluge, circumcision, etc. This arises from the fact that the human mind, finding itself inclined to that side by the truth, becomes thereby susceptible to all the falsehoods of this. 819. Jeremiah chapter 23, verse 32. The miracles of the false prophets. In the Hebrew and Vatable, Footnote, Professor of Hebrew in the Collège Royal in the 16th century. End of footnote. They are the tricks. Miracle does not always signify miracle. 1 Samuel chapter 14, verse 15. Miracle signifies fear, and is so in the Hebrew. The same evidently in Job chapter 33, verse 7, and also Isaiah chapter 21, verse 4. Jeremiah chapter 44, verse 12. 
portentum signifie simulacrum. Jeremiah chapter 50, verse 38, and it is so in the Hebrew and Vatable. Isaiah chapter 8, verse 18, Jesus Christ says that he and his will be in miracles. 820. If the devil favored the doctrine which destroys him, he would be divided against himself, as Jesus Christ said. If God favored the doctrine which destroys the church, he would be divided against himself. Omne regnum divisum. Footnote. Matthew chapter 12, verse 25. And knowing their thoughts, he said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. End of footnote. For Jesus Christ wrought against the devil and destroyed his power over the heart, of which exorcism is the symbolization, in order to establish the kingdom of God. And thus he adds, Si indigito dei regnum dei ad vos. Footnote. Luke chapter 11 verse 20. But if I by the finger of God cast out demons, then is the kingdom of God come upon you. End of footnote. 821. There is a great difference between tempting and leading into error. God tempts, but he does not lead into error. To tempt is to afford opportunities, which impose no necessity. If men do not love God, they will do a certain thing. To lead into error is to place a man under the necessity of inferring and following out what is untrue. 822. Abraham and Gideon are above revelation. The Jews blinded themselves in judging of miracles by the scripture. God has never abandoned his true worshippers. I prefer to follow Jesus Christ than any other, because he has miracle, prophecy, doctrine, perpetuity, etc., the Donatists, no miracle which obliges them to say it is the devil. The more we particularize God, Jesus Christ, the Church. Note, in the text, the thought is incomplete. End of note. 823. If there were no false miracles, there would be certainty. If there were no rule to judge of them, miracles would be useless, and there would be no reason for believing. Now there is, humanly speaking, no human certainty, but we have reason. 824. Either God has confounded the false miracles, or he has foretold them, and in both ways he has raised himself above what is supernatural with respect to us, and has raised us to it. 825. Miracles serve not to convert, but to condemn. 826. Reasons why we do not believe. John chapter 12, verses 37 and 38. Cum autem tanta signa fecisset, non credebant in eum, ut sermo Isaiae imteretur, ex caecavit, etc. Note. But though he had done so many signs before them, yet they believed not on him, that the word of Isaiah the prophet might be fulfilled, which he spake, Lord, who hath believed our report? And to whom hath the arm of the Lord been revealed? End of note. Haec dixit Isaias, quando vidit gloriam eius, et locutus est de eo. Judai signa petunt, et graeci sapientiam quaerunt. Nos autem iesum crucifixum, sed plenum signis, sed plenum sapientia. Vos autem Christum non crucifixum, et crevigionem sine miraculis, et sine sapientia. Footnote, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 22 and 23. Seeing that Jews ask for signs, and Greeks seek after wisdom, but we preach Christ crucified, unto Jews a stumbling block, and unto Gentiles foolishness. End of footnote. What makes us not believe in the true miracles is want of love. John. Sed vos non creditis, huia non estis ex oibus. Footnote, John, chapter 10, verse 26. But ye believe not, because ye are not of my sheep. End of footnote. What makes us believe the false is want of love. 1 Thessalonians, chapter 2. The foundation of religion, it is the miracles. What then, does God speak against miracles, against the foundations of the faith which we have in him? 
If there is a God, faith in God must exist on earth. Now, the miracles of Jesus Christ are not foretold by Antichrist, but the miracles of Antichrist are foretold by Jesus Christ. And so, if Jesus Christ were not the Messiah, he would have indeed led into error, but Antichrist cannot surely lead into error. When Jesus Christ foretold the miracles of Antichrist, did he think of destroying faith in his own miracles? Moses foretold Jesus Christ and bade to follow him. Jesus Christ foretold Antichrist and forbade to follow him. It was impossible that in the time of Moses men should keep their faith for Antichrist, who was unknown to them. But it is quite easy in the time of Antichrist to believe in Jesus Christ, already known. There is no reason for believing in Antichrist, which there is not for believing in Jesus Christ. But there are reasons for believing in Jesus Christ, which there are not for believing in the other. 827. Judges, chapter 13, verse 23. If the Lord were pleased to kill us, he would not have showed us all these things. Hezekiah, Sennacherib. Jeremiah, Hananiah, the false prophet, dies in seven months. 2 Maccabees, chapter 3. The temple, ready for pillage, miraculously succored. 2 Maccabees, chapter 15. 1 Kings, chapter 17. The widow to Elijah, who had restored her son. By this I know that thy words are true. 1 Kings, chapter 18. Elijah with the prophets of Baal. In the dispute concerning the true God and the truth of religion, there has never happened any miracle on the side of error and not of truth. 828. Opposition. Abel, Cain. Moses, the magicians. Elijah, the false prophets. Jeremiah, Hananiah. Micaiah, the false prophets. Jesus Christ, the Pharisees. St. Paul, Bar-Jesus. The Apostles, the Exorcists. Christians, Unbelievers. Catholics, Heretics. Elijah, Enoch. Antichrist. 829. Jesus Christ says that the Scriptures testify of him, but he does not point out in what respect. Even the prophecies could not prove Jesus Christ during his life, and so men would not have been culpable for not believing in him before his death, had the miracles not sufficed without doctrine. Now those who did not believe in him when he was still alive were sinners, as he said himself, and without excuse. Therefore they must have had proof beyond doubt which they resisted. Now they had not the prophecies, but only the miracles. Therefore the latter suffice when the doctrine is not inconsistent with them, and they ought to be believed. John chapter 7 verse 40 Dispute among the Jews as among the Christians of today. Some believed in Jesus Christ, others believed him not because of the prophecies which said that he should be born in Bethlehem. They should have considered more carefully whether he was not. For his miracles being convincing, they should have been quite sure of these supposed contradictions of his teaching to Scripture. And this obscurity did not excuse, but blinded them. Thus, those who refuse to believe in the miracles in the present day on account of a supposed contradiction, which is unreal, are not excused. The Pharisees said to the people who believed in him because of his miracles, This people who knoweth not the law are cursed. But have any of the rulers or of the Pharisees believed on him? For we know that out of Galilee ariseth no prophet. Nicodemus answered, Doth our law judge any man before it hear him? and specially such a man who works such miracles. 830. The prophecies were ambiguous. They are no longer so. 831. The five propositions were ambiguous. They are no longer so. 832. Miracles are no longer necessary because we have had them already. But when tradition is no longer minded, when the Pope alone is offered to us, when he has been imposed upon, and when the true source of truth, which is tradition, is thus excluded, and the Pope, who is its guardian, is biased, the truth is no longer free to appear. Then, as men speak no longer of truth, truth itself must speak to men. This is what happened in the time of Arius. 
miracles under Diocletian and under Arius. 833. Miracle. The people conclude this of themselves, but if the reason of it must be given to you, it is unfortunate to be an exception to the rule. The same must be strict and opposed to exception. But yet, as it is certain that there are exceptions to a rule, our judgment must, though strict, be just. 834. John, chapter 6, verse 26. Non quia vidisti signum, sed quia saturati estis. Note, Jesus answered them and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Ye seek me not because ye saw signs, but because ye ate of the loaves and were filled. End of note. Those who follow Jesus Christ because of his miracles honor his power in all the miracles which it produces. But those who, making profession to follow him because of his miracles, follow him in fact only because he comforts them and satisfies them with worldly blessings, discredit his miracles when they are opposed to their own comforts. John chapter 9 verse 16 Non est hic homo adeo, quia sabatum non custodit. Ali, quomodo potest homo peccator haec signa facere. Note, some therefore of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God, because he keepeth not the Sabbath. But others said, How can a man that is a sinner do such signs? And there was division among them. End of note. Which is the most clear? This house is not of God, for they do not there believe that the five propositions are in Jansenius. Others, this house is of God, for in it there are wrought strange miracles. Which is the most clear? Tu qui dicis, dico, quia profeta est, nisi esset hic adeo, non poterat facere quiquam. Footnote, John chapter 9, verses 17 and 33. They say therefore unto the blind man again, what sayest thou of him, in that he opened thine eyes? And he said, He is a prophet. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. End of footnote. 835. In the Old Testament, when they will turn you from God. In the New, when they will turn you from Jesus Christ. These are the occasions for excluding particular miracles from belief. No others need be excluded. Does it therefore follow that they would have the right to exclude all the prophets who came to them? No, they would have sinned in not excluding those who denied God, and would have sinned in excluding those who did not deny God. So soon, then, as we see a miracle, we must either assent to it, or have striking proofs to the contrary. We must see if it denies a God, or Jesus Christ, or the Church. 836 there is a great difference between not being for Jesus Christ and saying so, and not being for Jesus Christ and pretending to be so. The one party can do miracles, not the others. For it is clear of the one party that they are opposed to the truth, but not of the others, and thus miracles are clearer. 837. That we must love one God only is a thing so evident that it does not require miracles to prove it. 838. Jesus Christ performed miracles, then the apostles, and the first saints in great number, because the prophecies not being yet accomplished, but in the process of being accomplished by them, the miracles alone bore witness to them. It was foretold that the Messiah should convert the nations. How could this prophecy be fulfilled without the conversion of the nations? And how could the nations be converted to the Messiah if they did not see this final effect of the prophecies which prove him? Therefore, till he had died, risen again, and converted the nations, all was not accomplished, and so miracles were needed during all this time. Now they are no longer needed against the Jews, for the accomplished prophecies constitute a lasting miracle. 839. Though ye believe not me, believe at least the works. He refers them, as it were, to the strongest proof. It had been told to the Jews, as well as to Christians, that they should not always believe the prophets, but yet the Pharisees and scribes are greatly concerned about his miracles, and try to show that they are false, or wrought by the devil. For they must needs be convinced if they acknowledge that they are of God. 
At the present day we are not troubled to make this distinction. Still, this is very easy to do. Those who deny neither God nor Jesus Christ do no miracles which are not certain. Nemo facit virtutem in nomine meo, et quito possit de me male loqui. Footnote, Mark chapter 9, verse 39. But Jesus said, Forbid him not, for there is no man who shall do a mighty work in my name, and be able quickly to speak evil of me. End of footnote. But we have not to draw this distinction. Here is a sacred relic. Here is a thorn from the crown of the Saviour of the world, over whom the prince of this world has no power, which works miracles by the peculiar power of the blood shed for us. Now God himself chooses this house in order to display conspicuously therein his power. These are not men who do miracles by an unknown and doubtful virtue, which makes a decision difficult for us. It is God himself. It is the instrument of the passion of his only Son, who, being in many places, chooses this, and makes men come from all quarters there to receive these miraculous alleviations in their weaknesses. 840. The Church has three kinds of enemies. The Jews, who have never been of her body, the heretics, who have withdrawn from it, and the evil Christians, who rend her from within. These three kinds of different adversaries usually attack her in different ways, but here they attack her in one and the same way. As they are all without miracles, and as the Church has always had miracles against them, they have all had the same interest in evading them, and they all make use of this excuse, that doctrine must not be judged by miracles, but miracles by doctrine. There were two parties among those who heard Jesus Christ, those who followed his teaching on account of his miracles, others who said, Note, in the text the thought is incomplete. End of note. There were two parties in the time of Calvin. There are now the Jesuits, etc. 841. Miracles furnish the test in matters of doubt between Jews and heathens, Jews and Christians, Catholics and heretics, and slandered and slanderers between the two crosses. But miracles would be useless to heretics, for the church, authorized by miracles which have already obtained belief, tells us that they have not the true faith. There is no doubt that they are not in it, since the first miracles of the church exclude belief in theirs. Thus there is miracle against miracle, both the first and the greatest being on the side of the church. These nuns, astonished at what is said, that they are in the way of perdition, that their confessors are leading them to Geneva, that they suggest to them that Jesus Christ is not in the Eucharist, nor on the right hand of the Father, know that all this is false, and therefore offer themselves to God in this state. We de si via iniquitatis in me est. Footnote, Psalm 139, verse 24. And see if there be any wicked way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. End of footnote. What happens thereupon? This place, which is said to be the temple of the devil, God makes his own temple. It is said that the children must be taken away from it. God heals them there. It is said that it is the arsenal of hell. God makes of it the sanctuary of his grace. Lastly, they are threatened with all the fury and vengeance of heaven, and God overwhelms them with favors. A man would need to have lost his senses to conclude from this that they are therefore in the way of perdition. We have without doubt the same signs as St. Athanasius. 842. Si tu es Christus, dic nobis. Opera quae ego facio in nomine patris mei, haec testimonium per hibente me. Sed vos non creditis, quia non estis ex oibus meis. Always mei, voce meum audiunt. Footnote. Luke chapter 22, verse 67. If thou art the Christ, tell us. End of footnote. John, chapter 6, verse 30. Quod ergo tu facis signum ut videamus et credeamus tibi. Non dicunt, quam doctrinam praedicas? Note, they said therefore unto him, What then doest thou for a sign, that we may see and believe thee? What workest thou? End of note. Nemo potest facere signa, quae tu facis nisi Deus. Second Maccabees chapter 14, verse 15. Deus, quis signis evidentibus suam portionem protegit. 
Volumus signum videre, de Caelo, tentante seum. Luke, chapter 11, verse 16. Note, and others, trying him, sought of him a sign from heaven. End of note. Generatio praua signum quaerit, et non dabitur. Footnote. Matthew, chapter 12, verse 39. But he answered and said unto them, An evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall no sign be given it but the sign of Jonah the prophet. End of footnote. Et ingemiscens ait, quid generatio ista signum quaerit? Mark, chapter 8, verse 12. Note, and he sighed deeply in his spirit, and saith, Why doth this generation seek a sign? Verily I say unto you, There shall no sign be given unto this generation. End of note. They asked a sign with an evil intention. Et non poterat facere. Footnote, Mark, chapter 6, verse 5. And he could there do no mighty work, save that he laid his hands upon a few sick folk and healed them. End of footnote. And yet he promises them the sign of Jonah, the great and wonderful miracle of his resurrection. Nisi videritis signa non creditis. Footnote, John chapter 4, verse 48. Jesus therefore said unto him, Except ye see signs and wonders, ye will in no wise believe. End of footnote. He does not blame them for not believing unless there are miracles, but for not believing unless they are themselves spectators of them. Antichristum in signis mendacibus, says St. Paul, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Secundum operationem satanae, in seductione iis qui pereunt, et quod caritatem veritatis non receperunt, ut salvi fierent, ide omitet ilis deus operationes erroris ut credant mendacio. Footnote, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 9 to 11. Even he whose coming is according to the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders, and with all deceit of unrighteousness for them that perish, because they received not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause God sendeth them a working of error, that they should believe a lie. End of footnote. As in the passage of Moses, Tentat enim vos Deus, utrum diligati seum. Ecce praedixi vobis, vos ergo videte. 843. Here is not the country of truth. She wanders unknown amongst men. God has covered her with a veil, which leaves her unrecognized by those who do not hear her voice. Room is opened for blasphemy, even against the truths that are at least very likely. If the truths of the gospel are published, the contrary is published too, and the questions are obscured, so that the people cannot distinguish. And they ask, What have you to make you believed, rather than others? What sign do you give? You have only words, and so have we, if you had miracles, good and well. That doctrine ought to be supported by miracles is a truth, which they misuse in order to revile doctrine. And if miracles happen, it is said that miracles are not enough without doctrine, and this is another truth, which they misuse in order to revile miracles. Jesus Christ cured the man born blind, and performed a number of miracles on the Sabbath day. In this way he blinded the Pharisees, who said that miracles must be judged by doctrine. We have Moses, but as for this fellow we know not from whence he is. It is wonderful that you know not whence he is, and yet he does such miracles. Jesus Christ spoke neither against God nor against Moses. Antichrist and the false prophets, foretold by both testaments, will speak openly against God and against Jesus Christ. Who is not hidden? Note, in the text the thought is incomplete. End of note. God would not allow him, who would be a secret enemy, to do miracles openly. In a public dispute, where the two parties profess to be for God, for Jesus Christ, for the Church, miracles have never been on the side of the false Christians, and the other side has never been without a miracle. He hath a devil, John chapter 10, verse 21. And others said, Can a devil open the eyes of the blind? The proofs which Jesus Christ and the apostles draw from Scripture are not conclusive, for they say only that Moses foretold that a prophet should come. But they do not thereby prove that this is he, and that is the whole question. 
These passages, therefore, serve only to show that they are not contrary to Scripture, and that there appears no inconsistency, but not that there is agreement. Now this is enough, namely, exclusion of inconsistency, along with miracles. There is a mutual duty between God and men. We must pardon him this saying, Quid debui? Accuse me, God said in Isaiah. God must fulfill his promises, etc. Men owe it to God to accept the religion which he sends. God owes it to men not to lead them into error. Now, they would be led into error if the workers of miracles announced a doctrine which should not appear evidently false to the light of common sense, and if a greater worker of miracles had not already warned men not to believe them. Thus, if there were divisions in the church, and the Arians, for example, who declared themselves founded on Scripture just as the Catholics had done miracles, and not the Catholics, men should have been led into error. For, as a man, who announces to us the secrets of God, is not worthy to be believed on his private authority, and that is why the ungodly doubt him. So, when a man, as a token of the communion which he has with God, raises the dead, foretells the future, removes the seas, heals the sick, there is none so wicked as not to bow to him. And the incredulity of Pharaoh and the Pharisees is the effect of a supernatural obduracy. When, therefore, we see miracles and a doctrine not suspicious, both on one side, there is no difficulty. But when we see miracles and suspicious doctrine on the same side, we must then see which is the clearest. Jesus Christ was suspected. Bar Jesus blinded. The power of God surpasses that of his enemies. The Jewish exorcist beaten by the devil, saying, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are ye? Miracles are for doctrine, and not doctrine for miracles. If the miracles are true, shall we be able to persuade men of all doctrine? No, for this will not come to pass. Siangelus. Footnote, Galatians chapter 1, verse 8. But though we, or an angel from heaven, should preach unto you any gospel other than that which we preached unto you, let him be anathema. End of footnote. Rule. We must judge of doctrine by miracles. We must judge of miracles by doctrine. All this is true, but contains no contradiction. For we must distinguish the times. How glad you are to know the general rules, thinking thereby to set up dissension and render all useless. We shall prevent you, my father. Truth is one and constant. It is impossible from the duty of God to men that a man, hiding his evil teaching, and only showing the good, saying that he conforms to God and the church, should do miracles so as to instill insensibly a false and subtle doctrine. This cannot happen. And still less that God, who knows the heart, should perform miracles in favor of such an one. 844. The Three Marks of Religion Perpetuity, A Good Life, Miracles They destroy perpetuity by their doctrine of probability a good life by their morals, miracles by destroying either their truth or the conclusions to be drawn from them. If we believe them, the church will have nothing to do with perpetuity, holiness, and miracles. The heretics deny them, or deny the conclusions to be drawn from them. They do the same. But one would need to have no sincerity in order to deny them, or again to lose one's senses in order to deny the conclusions to be drawn from them. Nobody has ever suffered martyrdom for the miracles which she says he has seen. For the folly of men goes, perhaps, to the length of martyrdom, for those which the Turks believe by tradition, but not for those which they have seen. 845. The heretics have always attacked these three marks which they have not. 846. First objection. An angel from heaven... We must not judge of truth by miracles, but of miracles by truth. Therefore the miracles are useless. Now they are of use, and they must not be in opposition to the truth. Therefore what Father Lingeand has said, that God will not permit that a miracle may lead into error. When there shall be a controversy in the same church, miracle will decide. Second objection, but Antichrist will do miracles. 
The magicians of Pharaoh did not entice to error. Thus we cannot say to Jesus respecting Antichrist, You have led me into error. For Antichrist will do them against Jesus Christ, and so they cannot lead into error. Either God will not permit false miracles, or he will procure greater. Jesus Christ has existed since the beginning of the world. This is more impressive than all the miracles of Antichrist. If in the same church there should happen a miracle on the side of those in error, men would be led into error. Schism is visible. A miracle is visible. But schism is more a sign of error than a miracle is a sign of truth. Therefore, a miracle cannot lead into error. But apart from schism, error is not so obvious as a miracle is obvious. Therefore, a miracle could lead into error. Ubies deus tuus. Footnote, Psalm 42, verse 3. My tears have been my food day and night, while they continually say unto me, Where is thy God? End of footnote. Miracles show him, and are a light. 847. One of the anthems for Vespers at Christmas. Exortum est in tenebris, lumen rectis corde. Footnote, Psalm 112, verse 4. Unto the upright there ariseth light in the darkness. He is gracious and merciful and righteous. End of footnote. 848. If the compassion of God is so great that he instructs us to our benefit, even when he hides himself, what light ought we not to expect from him when he reveals himself? 849. Will est et non est footnote, is and is not, end of footnote, be received in faith itself as well as in miracles, and if it is inseparable in the others, note, in the text, the thought is incomplete, end of note. When St. Xavier works miracles, St. Hilary, ye wretches who oblige us to speak of miracles. Unjust judges, make not your own laws on the moment, Judge by those which are established, and by yourselves. Why qui conditis legis iniquus? Footnote, Isaiah chapter 10, verse 1. Woe unto them that decree unrighteous decrees, and to the writers that write perverseness. End of footnote. Miracles endless, false. In order to weaken your adversaries, you disarm the whole church. If they say that our salvation depends upon God, they are, quote, heretics. If they say that they are obedient to the Pope, that is, quote, hypocrisy. If they are ready to subscribe to all the articles, that is not enough. If they say that a man must not be killed for an apple, quote, they attack the morality of Catholics. If miracles are done among them, it is not a sign of holiness, and is, on the contrary, a symptom of heresy. The way in which the church has existed is that truth has been without dispute, or, if it has been contested, there has been the Pope, or, failing him, there has been the church. 850. The five propositions condemned, but no miracle, for the truth was not attacked. But the Sorbonne, but the Bull. Note, in the text the thought is incomplete. End of note. It is impossible that those who love God with all their hearts should fail to recognize the church, so evident is she. It is impossible that those who do not love God should be convinced of the church. Miracles have such influence that it was necessary that God should warn men not to believe in them in opposition to him, all clear as it is that there is a God. Without this, they would have been able to disturb men. And thus, so far from these passages, Deuteronomy chapter 13, making against the authority of the miracles, nothing more indicates their influence. And the same in respect of Antichrist, to seduce, if it were possible, even the elect. 851. The History of the Man Born Blind What says St. Paul? Does he continually speak of the evidence of the prophecies? No, but of his own miracle. What says Jesus Christ? Does he speak of the evidence of the prophecies? No, his death had not fulfilled them. But he says, Si non fecissem. Footnote, John chapter 15, verse 24. If I had not done among them the works which none other did, they had not had sin. 
but now have they both seen and hated both me and my father. End of footnote. Believe the works. Two supernatural foundations of our holy supernatural religion. One visible, the other invisible. Miracles with grace, miracles without grace. The synagogue, which has been treated with love as a type of the church, and with hatred because it was only the type, has been restored, being on the point of falling when it was well with God, and thus a type. Miracles prove the power which God has over hearts, by that which he exercises over bodies. The church has never approved a miracle among heretics. Miracles a support of religion. They have been the test of Jews. They have been the test of Christians, saints, innocents, and true believers. A miracle among schismatics is not so much to be feared, for schism, which is more obvious than a miracle, visibly indicates their error. But when there is no schism, and error is in question, miracle decides. Si non fecissem quae alius non fecit. Footnote, John chapter 15, verse 24. If I had not done among them the works which none other did, they had not had sin. But now have they both seen and hated both me and my father. End of footnote. The wretches who have obliged us to speak of miracles. Abraham and Gideon confirm faith by miracles. Judith, God speaks at last in their greatest oppression. If the cooling of love leaves the church almost without believers, miracles will rouse them. This is one of the last effects of grace. If one miracle were wrought among the Jesuits. When a miracle disappoints the expectation of those in whose presence it happens, and there is a disproportion between the state of their faith and the instrument of the miracle, it ought then to induce them to change. But with you it is otherwise. There would be as much reason in saying that, if the Eucharist raised a dead man, it would be necessary for one to turn a Calvinist rather than remain a Catholic. But when it crowns the expectation, and those who hoped that God would bless the remedies see themselves healed without remedies, note, in the text the thought is incomplete. End of note. The ungodly. No sign has ever happened on the part of the devil without a stronger sign on the part of God, or even without it having been foretold that such would happen. 852. Unjust persecutors of those whom God visibly protects. If they reproach you with their excesses, quote, they speak as the heretics. If they say that the grace of Jesus Christ distinguishes us, Quote, they are heretics. If they do miracles, quote, it is the mark of their heresy. Ezekiel, they say, these are the people of God who speak thus. It is said, believe in the church, but it is not said, believe in miracles, because the last is natural and not the first. The one had need of a precept, not the other. Hezekiah. The synagogue was only a type, and thus it did not perish and it was only a type, and so it is decayed. It was a type which contained the truth, and thus it has lasted until it no longer contained the truth. My reverend father, all this happened in types. Other religions perish. This one perishes not. Miracles are more important than you think. They have served for the foundation, and will serve for the continuation of the church till Antichrist, till the end. The Two Witnesses in the Old Testament and the New, miracles are performed in connection with types. Salvation, or a useless thing, if not to show that we must submit to the Scriptures. Type of the Sacrament. 853. We must judge soberly of divine ordinances, my father. St. Paul in the Isle of Malta. 854. The hardness of the Jesuits then surpasses that of the Jews, since those refused to believe Jesus Christ innocent only because they doubted if his miracles were of God. Whereas the Jesuits, though unable to doubt that the miracles of Port Royal are of God, do not cease to doubt still the innocence of that house. 855. I suppose that men believe miracles. You corrupt a religion either in favor of your friends or against your enemies. You arrange it at your will. 
856. On the Miracle. As God has made no family more happy, let it also be the case that he find none more thankful. End of section 13. Section 14 of Pensée. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Derek McLaughlin, London, Ontario, Canada. Latin language reading by Lenny, Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. Pensée by Blaise Pascal. Translated by W. F. Trotter. Section 14. Appendix. Polemical Fragments. 857. Clearness. Obscurity. There would be too great darkness if truth had not visible signs. This is a wonderful one, that it has always been preserved in one church and one visible assembly of men. There would be too great clearness if there were only one opinion in this church. But in order to recognize what is true, one has only to look at what has always existed, for it is certain that truth has always existed, and that nothing false has always existed. 858. The history of the Church ought properly to be called the history of truth. 859. There is a pleasure in being in a ship beaten about by a storm when we are sure that it will not founder. The persecutions which harass the church are of this nature. 860. In addition to so many other signs of piety, they are also persecuted, which is the best sign of piety. 861. The church is an excellent state when it is sustained by God only. 862. The church has always been attacked by opposite errors, but perhaps never at the same time as now. And if she suffer more because of the multiplicity of errors, she derives this advantage from it, that they destroy each other. She complains of both, but far more of the Calvinists, because of the schism. It is certain that many of the two opposite sects are deceived. They must be disillusioned. Faith embraces many truths which seem to contradict each other. There is a time to laugh, and a time to weep, etc. Respond, no responda, etc. Footnote. Proverbs chapter 26, verses 4 and 5. Answer not a fool according to his folly, lest thou also be like unto him. Answer a fool according to his folly, lest he be wise in his own conceit. End of footnote. The source of this is the union of the two natures in Jesus Christ, and also the two worlds, the creation of a new heaven and a new earth, a new life and a new death, all things double, and the same names remaining. And finally the two natures that are in the righteous, for they are the two worlds, and a member and image of Jesus Christ. And thus all the names suit them, righteous, yet sinners, dead, yet living, living, yet dead, elect, yet outcast, etc., there are then a great number of truths, both of faith and of morality, which seem contradictory, and which all hold good together in a wonderful system. The source of all heresies is the exclusion of some of these truths, and the source of all the objections which the heretics make against us is the ignorance of some of our truths. And it generally happens that, unable to conceive the connection of two opposite truths, and believing that the admission of one involves the exclusion of the other, they adhere to the one, exclude the other, and think of us as opposed to them. Now exclusion is the cause of their heresy, and ignorance that we hold the other truth causes their objections. First example. Jesus Christ is God and man. The Arians, unable to reconcile these things, which they believe incompatible, say that he is man. In this they are Catholics. But they deny that he is God. In this they are heretics. They allege that we deny his humanity. In this they are ignorant. Second example, on the subject of the Holy Sacrament. 
we believe that the substance of the bread being changed and being consubstantial with that of the body of our Lord, Jesus Christ, is therein really present. That is one truth. Another is that this sacrament is also a type of the cross and of glory and a commemoration of the two. That is the Catholic faith which comprehends these two truths which seem opposed. The heresy of today, not conceiving that this sacrament contains at the same time both the presence of Jesus Christ and a type of him, and that it is a sacrifice and a commemoration of a sacrifice, believes that neither of these truths can be admitted without excluding the other for this reason. They fasten to this point alone, that this sacrament is typical, and in this they are not heretics. They think that we exclude this truth, hence it comes that they raise so many objections to us out of the passages of the fathers which assert it. Finally they deny the presence, and in this they are heretics. Third example, indulgences. The shortest way, therefore, to prevent heresies is to instruct in all truths, and the surest way to refute them is to declare them all. For what will the heretics say? In order to know whether an opinion is a father's, note, in the text the thought is incomplete. End of note. 863. All err the more dangerously as they each follow a truth. Their fault is not in following a falsehood, but in not following another truth. 864. Truth is so obscure in these times, and falsehood so established, that unless we love the truth, we cannot know it. 865. If there is ever a time in which we must make profession of two opposite truths, it is when we are reproached for omitting one. Therefore the Jesuits and Jansenists are wrong in concealing them, but the Jansenists more so, for the Jesuits have better made profession of the two. 866. Two kinds of people make things equal to one another, as feasts to working days, Christians to priests, all things among them, etc. And hence the one party conclude that what is then bad for priests is also so for Christians, and the other that what is not bad for Christians is lawful for priests. 867. If the ancient church was in error, the church is fallen. If she should be in error today, it is not the same thing, for she has always the superior maxim of tradition from the hand of the ancient church. And so this submission and this conformity to the ancient church prevail and correct all. But the ancient church did not assume the future church, and did not consider her as we assume and consider the ancient. 868. That which hinders us in comparing what formerly occurred in the church with what we see there now is that we generally look upon St. Athanasius, St. Teresa, and the rest as crowned with glory and acting towards us as gods. Now that time has cleared up things, it does so appear. But at the time when he was persecuted, this great saint was a man called Athanasius, and St. Teresa was a nun. Elias was a man subject to like passions as we are, says St. James, to disabuse Christians of that false idea which makes us reject the example of the saints as disproportioned to our state. They were saints, say we, they are not like us. What then actually happened? St. Athanasius was a man called Athanasius, accused of many crimes, condemned by such and such a council for such and such a crime. All the bishops assented to it, and finally the Pope. What said they to those who opposed this? That they disturbed the peace, and that they created schism, etc. Zeal, light. Four kinds of persons. Zeal without knowledge. Knowledge without zeal. Neither knowledge nor zeal. Both zeal and knowledge. The first three condemned him. The last acquitted him, were excommunicated by the church, and yet saved the church. 869. If St. Augustine came at the present time, and was as little authorized as his defenders, he would accomplish nothing. God directs his church well by having sent him before with authority. 870. God has not wanted to absolve without the church. As she has part in the offense, he desires her to have part in the pardon. He associates her with this power, as kings their parliaments. 
But if she absolves or binds without God, she is no longer the church. For, as in the case of Parliament, even if the king have pardoned a man, it must be ratified. But if Parliament ratifies without the king, or refuses to ratify on the order of the king, it is no longer the Parliament of the king, but a rebellious assembly. 871. The Church, the Pope. Unity, Plurality. Considering the Church as a unity, the Pope, who is its head, is as the whole. Considering it as a plurality, the Pope is only a part of it. The Fathers have considered the Church now in the one way, now in the other, and thus they have spoken differently of the Pope. St. Cyprian. Saker dos Dei. But in establishing one of these truths, they have not excluded the other. Plurality, which is not reduced to unity, is confusion. Unity, which does not depend on plurality, is tyranny. There is scarcely any other country than France in which it is permissible to say that the council is above the Pope. 872. The Pope is head. Who else is known of all? Who else is recognized by all, having power to insinuate himself into all the body, because he holds the principal shoot, which insinuates itself everywhere? How easy it was to make this degenerate into tyranny. That is why Christ has laid down for them this precept. Was alter non sic? Footnote, Luke chapter 22, verse 26. But ye shall not be so, but he that is the greater among you let him become as the younger, and he that is chief as he that doth serve. End of footnote. 873. The Pope hates and fears the learned, who do not submit to him at will. 874. We must not judge of what the Pope is by some words of the Fathers, as the Greeks said in Council, important rules, but by the acts of the Church and the Fathers, and by the canons. Duo aut tres in unum. Footnote, John chapter 10, verse 30. I and the Father are one. First John chapter 5, verse 8. For there are three who bear witness, the Spirit, and the water, and the blood, and the three agree in one. End of footnote. Unity and plurality. It is an error to exclude one of the two, as the Papists do, who exclude plurality, or the Huguenots, who exclude unity. 875. Would the Pope be dishonored by having his knowledge from God and tradition? And is it not dishonoring him to separate him from this holy union? 876. God does not perform miracles in the ordinary conduct of his church. It would be a strange miracle if infallibility existed in one man. But it appears so natural for it to reside in a multitude, since the conduct of God is hidden under nature, as in all his other works. 877. Kings dispose of their own power, but the popes cannot dispose of theirs. 878. Summum ius, summa injuria. Footnote. The greatest law, the greatest injury. End of footnote. The majority is the best way, because it is visible, and has strength to make itself obeyed. Yet it is the opinion of the least able. If men could have done it, they would have placed might in the hands of justice. But as might does not allow itself to be managed as men want, because it is a palpable quality, whereas justice is a spiritual quality of which men dispose as they please, they have placed justice in the hands of might. And thus that is called just which men are forced to obey. Hence comes the right of the sword, for the sword gives a true right. Otherwise we should see violence on one side and justice on the other. End of the Twelfth Provincial. Hence comes the injustice of the Fronde, which raises its alleged justice against power. It is not the same in the Church, for there is a true justice and no violence. 879. Injustice. Jurisdiction is not given for the sake of the judge, but for that of the litigant. It is dangerous to tell this to the people, but the people have too much faith in you. It will not harm them, and may serve you. It should therefore be made known. Pasque oeas meas non tuas. Footnote. John, chapter 21, verse 17. He saith unto him the third time, Simon, son of John, lovest thou me? 
Peter was grieved, because he said unto him the third time, Lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things, thou knowest that I love thee. Jesus said unto him, Feed my sheep. End of footnote. You owe me pasturage. 880. Men like certainty. They like the Pope to be infallible in faith, and grave doctors to be infallible in morals, so as to have certainty. 881. The Church teaches, and God inspires, both infallibly. The work of the Church is of use only as a preparation for grace or condemnation. What it does is enough for condemnation, not for inspiration. 882. Every time the Jesuits may impose upon the Pope, they will make all Christendom perjured. The Pope is very easily imposed upon because of his occupations, and the confidence which he has in the Jesuits, and the Jesuits are very capable of imposing upon him by means of calumny. 883. The wretches who have obliged me to speak of the basis of religion. 884. Sinners purified without penitence, the righteous justified without love, all Christians without the grace of Jesus Christ, God without power over the will of men, a predestination without mystery, a redemption without certitude. 885. Any one is made a priest who wants to be so, as under Jeroboam. It is a horrible thing that they propound to us the discipline of the church of today as so good that it is made a crime to desire to change it. Formerly it was infallibly good, and it was thought that it could be changed without sin, and now, such as it is, we cannot wish it changed. It has indeed been permitted to change the custom of not making priests without such great circumspection that there were hardly any who were worthy, and it is not allowed to complain of the custom which makes so many who are unworthy. 886. Heretics. Ezekiel. All the heathen, and also the prophet, spoke evil of Israel. But the Israelites were so far from having the right to say to him, You speak like the heathen, that he is most forcible upon this, that the heathens say the same as he. 887. The Jansenists are like the heretics in the reformation of morality, but you are like them in evil. 888. You are ignorant of the prophecies if you do not know that all this must happen, princes, prophets, pope, and even the priests. And yet the church is to abide. By the grace of God we have not come to that. Woe to these priests! But we hope that God will bestow his mercy upon us that we shall not be of them. Second letter of St. Peter, chapter 2. False prophets in the past, the image of future ones. 889. So that if it is true, on the one hand, that some lax monks and some corrupt casuists, who are not members of the hierarchy, are steeped in these corruptions, it is, on the other hand, certain that the true pastors of the church, who are the true guardians of the divine word, have preserved it unchangeably against the efforts of those who have attempted to destroy it. And thus true believers have no pretext to follow that laxity, which is only offered to them by the strange hands of these casuists, instead of the sound doctrine which is presented to them by the fatherly hands of their own pastors. And the ungodly and heretics have no ground for publishing these abuses as evidence of imperfection in the providence of God over his church, since, the church consisting properly in the body of the hierarchy, we are so far from being able to conclude from the present state of matters that God has abandoned her to corruption, that it has never been more apparent than at the present time that God visibly protects her from corruption. For if some of these men, who, by an extraordinary vocation, have made profession of withdrawing from the world and adopting the monk's dress, in order to live in a more perfect state than ordinary Christians, have fallen into excesses which horrify ordinary Christians, and have become to us what the false prophets were among the Jews, this is a private and personal misfortune which must indeed be deplored, but from which nothing can be inferred against the care which God takes of his church. 
Since all these things are so clearly foretold, and it has been so long since announced that these temptations would arise from this kind of people, so that when we are well instructed, we see in this, rather, evidence of the care of God than of his forgetfulness in regard to us. 890. Tertullian. Nunquam ecclesia reformabitur. Footnote. The church will never be reformed. End of footnote. 891. Heretics who take advantage of the doctrine of the Jesuits must be made to know that it is not that of the church, the doctrine of the church, and that our divisions do not separate us from the altar. 892. If, in differing, we condemned, you would be right. Uniformity without diversity is useless to others. Diversity without uniformity is ruinous for us. The one is harmful outwardly, the other inwardly. 893. By showing the truth we cause it to be believed, but by showing the injustice of ministers we do not correct it. Our mind is assured by a proof of falsehood. Our purse is not made secure by proof of injustice. 894. Those who love the church lament to see the corruption of morals, but laws at least exist. But these corrupt the laws. The model is damaged. 895. Men never do evil so completely and cheerfully as when they do it from religious conviction. 896. It is in vain that the Church has established these words, anathemas, heresies, etc. They are used against her. 897. The servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth, for the Master tells him only the act and not the intention, and this is why he often obeys slavishly and defeats the intention. But Jesus Christ has told us the object, and you defeat that object. 898. They cannot have perpetuity, and they seek universality, and therefore they make the whole church corrupt, that they may be saints. 899. Against those who misuse passages of Scripture, and who pride themselves in finding one which seems to favor their error. The chapter for Vespers, Passion Sunday, the prayer for the King. Explanation of these words. He that is not with me is against me. And of these others, he that is not against you is for you. A person who says, I am neither for nor against, we ought to reply to him. 900. He who will give the meaning of Scripture, and does not take it from Scripture, is an enemy of Scripture. Augustine, On Christian Doctrine. 901. Humilibus dat gratiam, an ideo non dedit humilitatem. Footnote, James, chapter 4, verse 6. But he giveth more grace. Wherefore the scripture saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace to the humble. End of footnote. Si eum non recuperunt, quot quot autem non recuperunt, a non erant sui. Footnote, John, chapter 1, verses 11 and 12. He came unto his own, and they that were his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he the right to become children of God, even to them that believe on his name. End of footnote. 902. It must indeed be, says Fouillon, that this is not so certain, for controversy indicates uncertainty. St. Athanasius, St. Chrysostom, Morals Unbelievers. The Jesuits have not made the truth uncertain, but they have made their own ungodliness certain. Contradiction has always been permitted in order to blind the wicked, for all that offends truth or love is evil. This is the true principle. 903. All religions and sects in the world have had natural reason for a guide. Christians alone have been constrained to take their rules from without themselves, and to acquaint themselves with those which Jesus Christ bequeathed to men of old to be handed down to true believers. This constraint wearies these good fathers. They desire, like other people, to have liberty to follow their own imaginations. It is in vain that we cry to them, as the prophet said to the Jews of old, Enter into the church, acquaint yourselves with the precepts which the men of old left to her, 
and follow these paths. They have answered like the Jews, We will not walk in them, but we will follow the thoughts of our hearts. And they have said, We will be as the other nations. 904. They make a rule of exception. Have the men of old given absolution before penance? Do this as exceptional. But of the exception you make a rule without exception, so that you do not even want the rule to be exceptional. 905. On confessions and absolutions without signs of regret. God regards only the inward, the church judges only by the outward. God absolves as soon as he sees penitence in the heart, the church when she sees it in works. God will make a church pure within, which confounds by its inward and entirely spiritual holiness the inward impiety of proud sages and Pharisees. And the church will make an assembly of men whose external manners are so pure as to confound the manners of the heathen. If there are hypocrites among them, but so well disguised that she does not discover their venom, she tolerates them. For, though they are not accepted of God, whom they cannot deceive, they are of men, whom they do deceive. And thus she is not dishonored by their conduct, which appears holy. But you want the church to judge neither of the inward, because that belongs to God alone, nor of the outward, because God dwells only upon the inward. And thus, taking away from her all choice of men, you retain in the church the most dissolute, and those who dishonor her so greatly, that the synagogues of the Jews and sects of philosophers would have banished them as unworthy, and have abhorred them as impious. 906. The easiest conditions to live in according to the world are the most difficult to live in according to God, and vice versa. Nothing is so difficult according to the world as the religious life. Nothing is easier than to live it according to God. Nothing is easier according to the world than to live in high office and great wealth. Nothing is more difficult to live in them according to God and without acquiring an interest in them and a liking for them. 907. The casuists submit the decision to the corrupt reason, and the choice of decisions to the corrupt will, in order that all that is corrupt in the nature of man may contribute to his conduct. 908. But is it probable that probability gives assurance? Difference between rest and security of conscience. Nothing gives certainty but truth. Nothing gives rest but the sincere search for truth. 909. The whole society itself of their casuists cannot give assurance to a conscience in error, and that is why it is important to choose good guides. Thus they will be doubly culpable, both in having followed ways which they should not have followed, and in having listened to teachers to whom they should not have listened. 910. Can it be anything but compliance with the world which makes you find things probable? Will you make us believe that it is truth, and that if dueling were not the fashion, you would find it probable that they might fight, considering the matter in itself? 911. Must we kill to prevent there being any wicked? This is to make both parties wicked instead of one. Winking bono malum. Footnote. Romans chapter 12 verse 21. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. End of footnote. St. Augustine. 912. Universal. Ethics and language are special but universal sciences. 913. Probability. Each one can employ it, no one can take it away. 914. They allow lust to act and check scruples, whereas they should do the contrary. 915. Montalt. Lax opinions please men so much that it is strange that theirs displease. It is because they have exceeded all bounds. Again, there are many people who see the truth and who cannot attain to it, but there are few who do not know that the purity of religion is opposed to our corruptions. It is absurd to say that an eternal recompense is offered to the morality of Escobar. 916. Probability. They have some true principles, but they misuse them. Now, the abuse of truth ought to be as much punished as the introduction of falsehood. 
as if they were two hells, one for sins against love, the other for those against justice. 917. Probability. The earnestness of the saints in seeking the truth was useless, if the probable is trustworthy. The fear of the saints who have always followed the surest way, St. Teresa having always followed her confessor. 918. Take away probability, and you can no longer please the world. Give probability, and you can no longer displease it. 919. These are the effects of the sins of the peoples and of the Jesuits. The great have wished to be flattered. The Jesuits have wished to be loved by the great. They have all been worthy to be abandoned to the spirit of lying, the one party to deceive, the others to be deceived. They have been avaricious, ambitious, voluptuous. Quaker wabum tibi magistris. Footnote, 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse 3. For the time will come when they will not endure the sound doctrine, but having itching ears will heap to themselves teachers after their own lusts. End of footnote. Worthy disciples of such masters, they have sought flatterers, and have found them. 920. If they do not renounce their doctrine of probability, their good maxims are as little holy as the bad, for they are founded on human authority, and thus, if they are more just, they will be more reasonable, but not more holy. They take after the wild stem on which they are grafted. If what I say does not serve to enlighten you, it will be of use to the people. If these are silent, the stones will speak. Silence is the greatest persecution. The saints were never silent. It is true that a call is necessary, but it is not from the decrees of the council that we must learn whether we are called. It is from the necessity of speaking. Now, after Rome has spoken, and we think that she has condemned the truth, and that they have written it, and after the books which have said the contrary are censured, we must cry out so much the louder, the more unjustly we are censured, and the more violently they would stifle speech, until there come a Pope who hears both parties, and who consults antiquity to do justice. So the good Popes will find the Church still in outcry. The Inquisition and the Society are the two scourges of the truth. Why do you not accuse them of Arianism? For, though they have said that Jesus Christ is God, Perhaps they mean by it not the natural interpretation, but as it is said, The Estes. Footnote. Ye are gods. End of footnote. If my letters are condemned at Rome, that which I condemn in them is condemned in heaven. A tuum, Domine Iesu, tribunal appello. Footnote. To thy judgment seat, Lord Jesus, I appeal. End of footnote. You yourselves are corruptible. I feared that I had written ill, seeing myself condemned, but the example of so many pious writings makes me believe the contrary. It is no longer allowable to write well, so corrupt or ignorant is the Inquisition. It is better to obey God than men. I fear nothing, I hope for nothing. It is not so with the bishops. Port Royal fears, and it is bad policy to disperse them, for they will fear no longer and will cause greater fear. I do not even fear your like censures, if they are not founded on those of tradition. Do you censure all? What, even my respect? No. Say then what, or you will do nothing, if you do not point out the evil, and why it is evil. And this is what they will have great difficulty in doing. Probability. They have given a ridiculous explanation of certitude. For, after having established that all their ways are sure, they have no longer called that sure which leads to heaven without danger of not arriving there by it, but that which leads there without danger of going out of that road. 921. The saints indulge in subtleties in order to think themselves criminals, and impeach their better actions, and these indulge in subtleties in order to excuse the most wicked. The heathen sages erected a structure equally fine outside, but upon a bad foundation, and the devil deceives men by this apparent resemblance based on the most different foundation. Man never had so good a cause as I, and others have never furnished so good a capture as you. The more they point out weakness in my person,
the more they authorize my cause. You say that I am a heretic. Is that lawful? And if you do not fear that men do justice, do you not fear that God does justice? You will feel the force of the truth, and you will yield to it. There is something supernatural in such a blindness. Digna necessitas. Footnote. Their desert by necessity was drawing nigh. Wisdom, chapter 19, verse 4. End of footnote. Mentiris impudentissime. Footnote. You lie most impudently. End of footnote. Doctrina sua noscitur vir. Footnote. A man is known by his doctrine. End of footnote. False piety, a double sin. I am alone against thirty thousand. No. Protect you the court. Protect you deception. Let me protect the truth. It is all my strength. If I lose it, I am undone. I shall not lack accusations and persecutions, but I possess the truth, and we shall see who will take it away. I do not need to defend religion, but you do not need to defend error and injustice. Let God, out of his compassion, having no regard to the evil which is in me, and having regard to the good which is in you, grant us all grace that truth may not be overcome in my hands, and that falsehood... Note, in the text the thought is incomplete. 922. Probable. Let us see if we seek God sincerely by comparison of the things which we love. It is probable that this food will not poison me. It is probable that I shall not lose my action by not prosecuting it. 923. It is not absolution only which remits sins by the sacrament of penance, but contrition, which is not real if it does not seek the sacrament. 924. People who do not keep their word without faith, without honor, without truth, deceitful in heart, deceitful in speech, for which that amphibious animal in fable was once reproached, which held itself in a doubtful position between the fish and the birds. It is important to kings and princes to be considered pious, and therefore they must confess themselves to you. End of section 14 End of Pensee